You're most welcome to this talk. Now, it turns out that the Institutes of Medicine in the United States, now the Academy of Medicine, has made a, a really quite inexplicable, simple schoolboy, schoolgirl error on the amount of vitamin D that's required. Let me give you the bottom line quickly of this video, and then you can decide if you want to watch. Now, this is from this paper here, a statistical error in the estimation of the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin D. And this paper actually came out in 2014. So um, they haven't quite got round to correcting this uh, in the time since, which is really quite incredible, 11 years. So what this means is in the United States, uh, if this day, if information we're going to look at is correct, and we'll be looking at it in some detail in a minute, it means in the United States, the recommended amount of vitamin D is 15 times too low, 15 times lower uh, than it should be, at least 15 times lower than it should be. In the United Kingdom, it's 22 times lower than it should be. And this mistake seems to have been perpetuated for the last 11 years, at least. Really hard to explain how such a simplistic error could be made. And OK, people make mistakes, but, but then correct it the day after. Why has this not been corrected in 11 years? It almost looks like they want people to stay unhealthy. I'm sure that's not the case, of course. But it, it's inexplicable how they haven't corrected this simple schoolboy error. Come on, you're on multi-million dollar budgets, you can do better than this. Uh, United Kingdom, 22 times too low. And it looks like the United Kingdom just followed the American guideline, but we'll see that in a minute. Now, the Institutes of Medicine calculation, what they worked out was that 600 units of vitamin D, which is a very small dose, that's 15 micrograms, will give 97.5% of the people of the population will achieve a target dose of 63 nanomoles per litre. But even that dose is actually only 25.2 nanograms per mil. Different ways of measuring it. The conversion is 2.5. So anyway, what they worked out was you give 600 units a day and nearly everyone, 97.5% of people, <coughs> will achieve 63 nanomoles a litre. What is the actual correct calculation? 600 units a day, 97.5% of the population will actually achieve 26.8. So not the 63 that they hoped for, but rather 26.8, uh, which is 10.7. Uh, nanograms per mole, which is well in the deficient range. So they thought they were getting that. They're actually getting that because of this simplistic error. Quite incredible. Now, if this error is corrected, which it hasn't been, but if it were to be corrected, it would mean this. Uh, requirements based on the correct calculation, not 600, as in the US, not 400 units as in the US, as in the UK, rather. Um, why? So the American authorities went for 600. It looks like the Brits just said, well, we'll have about the same. Don't want to be exactly the same. No. Don't want it to look like we're copying. So we'll just alter it by a couple of hundred. I don't know what happened, but very unimpressive performance from both governments, to be quite honest. Anyway, it turns out that the amount you would actually need to give 97 0.5% of the population, 63 nanomoles per litre is not 600, not 400, but 8,895 international units of vitamin D may be needed to accomplish the 97.5% of individuals to achieve serum 25-OH vitamin D, that's the levels of vitamin D in the blood, of more than 50 nanomoles per litre. Um, that's what this video is about. Preposterously simple mistake but with massive implications. Now, this is the graph here. This is what they, this is what they <coughs> thought they were getting. They thought they would give 600, and most people would be above 50, and the average here would be about 63. That's what they thought they were getting. Uh, apart from their simple schoolboy error. So that's what they thought they were getting. What they actually were getting was this way 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 lower levels with these being the individual data points nowhere near what they thought they were getting 
Let's look back to what they thought they were getting. Again, that's what they thought they were getting. Up here in the 63s, what they were actually getting was down here in the 23s, 24s. Um, with the 600 units. <laughs> Couldn't make this up, really. Anyway, a little more detail. Um, so... The reason this happened, it's called the average versus individual mistake. Now, I don't know much about statistics, but even I know about this. The average versus the individual mistake. What they did was they took the average of groups, not the average of individuals. I mean, yeah, you know, for, 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 for one of my junior students to make this kind of mistake, you know, I would expect that. For a multi-million dollar institute to make this mistake, you really wouldn't expect this. These people have got or can employ the best statisticians in the country if they want to. And yet this simple mistake has been allowed to be perpetuated all these years. Quite hard to fathom, really. Now, to show how important this is, in Canada, <coughs> Canada, they estimated that from the diet, people only get um, 232 units of vitamin D from the diet. Bear in mind, it looks like the average number we need is 8,895 so clearly from the diet, we're not going to get it. And uh, But in Canada, in the United Kingdom, and indeed a lot of the United States in winter, you're not going to get anything, hardly, virtually nothing. So it looks like a lot of people in Canada and the United Kingdom all throughout winter are probably getting about 323 international units of vitamin D, when according to this study, they could do with 8,895 units of vitamin D. Um, as we say, a huge difference, even from the recommended mounts, uh, from the recommended supplements, which, of course, most people don't take. Um, nothing like enough. So uh, that's the graph of what the study claimed up, up here in the 60-odd uh, range, round about here, um, with 600 units. Uh, what we were actually getting was not up here as they thought they were getting, what we were actually getting was down here in the very low levels. This is what we were actually getting. Very low levels, averaging out at about 23 instead of averaging out at about 63. What a difference, huge difference in what they thought they were getting and what they actually got after this ridiculous error. So Institutes of Medicine recommended daily amount 600 units per day, aged 1 to age 70. Now it's called the National Academy of Medicine. UK is even worse, recommending only 400, which is 10 micrograms per day. Um, utterly preposterous, simplistic mistakes. And vitamin D, of course, is useful for everything. I mean, I've, I've just started putting a few things together. Vitamin D reduces deaths in prostate cancer. For every 20 nanomoles per litre, that's 8 nanograms per mil of circulating, vitamin D reduces the risk of cancer-specific mortality by 9%. That's a paper we've looked at before in detail on this channel. Uh, protects against uh, pre-diabetes developing. 76% reduction in progression of pre-diabetes to diabetes between high and low vitamin D levels. Colon cancer, a known link. All forms of immunity, heart disease, diabetes type 1. You know, ma making people vitamin D replete is the most basic, low-cost public health intervention that could be carried out. Why have they not corrected this? Is it deliberate? Do they know something we don't? Do they have motivations that aren't declared? I, I don't know. How could I possibly know that? Anyway, let's go on with what we do know. Um, 600 international units to achieve serum vitamin D, 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's the circulating reservoir form in the blood of 50 nanomoles a litre in 97% of individuals. Well, they were wrong. Um, they were wrong. It wasn't enough. Levels of 50 nanomoles or more have been shown to prevent uh, to, uh, to benefit bone health and prevent injury from disease. True, true, true. 50 nanomoles a litre is the level required to prevent uh, rickets and uh, bone disease. But we're nowhere near this on the recommended amounts. 
nowhere near it. On the calculations that they got wrong, it wasn't too bad. But of course, that's the amount to prevent bony injury. You need more to prevent cancers and immune deficiencies and diabetes and dementia. You need more. Now, if you give people more vitamin D, they get less dementia. It's that simple. Well, to to be fair, the clinical trials haven't been carried out because no one's paid for them, but observational studies indicate this, really through a whole range of well-conducted studies. Um, Quite incredible. We're all remaining ill because of this, these recommendations. Um, So it's not just bony injury, not just rickets. Institute of Medicine based their RDA for vitamin D on an aggregation of 10 supplement studies. So this is, this is why they got it wrong. Carried out during the winter months at locations above the 50th parallel. Now just to give you some indication, all of Canada probably is above the 50th parallel. And in the UK, um, all of the UK is above the 50th parallel as well. Because that's the 51st there. So, um, you know, basically in winter, <coughs> Canada and the United States... We don't make any. We get two, 250, whatever it is, from um, 250 units from diet. Unless you're eating huge amounts of cod liver oil, and most of us don't. Yep. Right. Um, carried out during the winter months above the 50th parallel. But even, even, in, even in Australia, vitamin D deficiency is common because people keep out the sun so much. Institute of Medicine uh, regressed 32 studies to give the average dose. So they're looking at the dose that you give compared to the plasma ratio. But they got it wrong. It makes sense. How much should you take to get the right amount in the blood? But they got it wrong. Uh, On the basis of this, Institute of Medicine estimated that 600 units of vitamin D would achieve an average of 63. But they were wrong. They were wrong. The correct requirements are... Nearly 9,000 a day. Uh, this dose is well in excess of the current RDA of 600 units per day and tolerable upper limit of 4,000 units a day that's suggested. So it looks like their tolerable limits are also wrong. Certainly need to be reviewed, so we'll give that a big question mark, shall we? Both countries here really need to get their act together. This is an appalling situation. The authors of the paper say... The public health and clinical implications of the miscalculated RDAs, vitamin D, are serious, very much so. With the current recommendation of 600 IUs a day, bone health objectives and disease and injury prevention will not be met, let alone the diabetes, let alone the dementia, let alone the cancers, which certainly won't be met. We recommend that the RDA for vitamin D be reconsidered to allow for appropriate public health and clinical decision making. Um, I would say that is absolutely true. Let me just show you where all this came from. Um, So this is the, this start here. Uh, Yeah, this is the study, a statistical error in the estimation of the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin D. Uh, That's the National Academy uh, website, health for everyone, everywhere. It might be helped by getting your vitamin D levels sorted out. National, na, na, it was the National Institutes of Health. It's now the National Academy of Medicine. Allegedly. Uh, that's the NHS joke. I mean, recommendations uh, for 400 a day. And that's another good paper that we might cover in some more detail, the big vitamin D mistake. So that's kind of where this is coming from now. For those of you that are interested, I'm just going to tell you very briefly how they got this wrong. I'm just going to go through it quickly. But I'm going to put the full uh, the full notes in the description. So the mistake was that they made the average versus individual mistake. They were taking the averages of groups, not individuals. So the Institute of Medicine's goal was to find a vitamin D dose that ensured 97.5% of individuals reached a healthy blood level of 50 nanomoles per litre. But of course, we now believe that is too low for many other aspects of health as we've mentioned the statistical error occurred because the institutes of medicine analyzed the average of different studies rather than the data of 
individual participants. So what they did was they took the average from studies. What they should have done is go into those studies, extracted the data from all the individuals, put them on a new spreadsheet and recrunched it. That's called a meta-analysis. But that seemed to be beyond them. Strangely enough, inexplicably. The statistical error because the inst- the statistical error uh, occurred because the institutes of medicine analysed the average differences between studies rather than individuals. They looked at ten studies and took the average dose levels achieved in those studies. They calculated a statistical range confidence interval based on, on those averages of the studies, not the individuals. It's so basic, really. They found that six hundred international units, ninety seven point five percent of the study averages would hit the target in other words if they did this the stud 97.5 percent of the studies would be correct not 97.5 percent of the individuals so the problem is that there's much less variation between averages than there is between individuals of course of course by using the averages the institute of medicine accidentally smoothed out the data they assumed that if the average person in the study was fine then almost everyone was this is ridiculous. This is inductive thinking. You know, it's extrapolating from the individual situation to the general. It's like saying, you know what, um, my, 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 uh, my uncle my uncle Stan had a sore foot and he had the orange pills. Therefore, you've got a sore foot, you need the orange pills as well. It's ridiculous. So, an analogy from classrooms. Imagine you want to ensure every student has a pass grade. <clears throat> the Institute of Medicine method. They looked at the average scores of 30 different classrooms. They set a curriculum so that 97.5% of classrooms would have a passing average. But the reality is even in a classroom with a passing average, there are students who fail below the amount of vitamin D required. So to correct this, to ensure 97.5% of students pass, you have to look at the lowest performing students, not the class average. So when the authors of this paper recalculated the number using the variation of individuals, who of course are much more variable than studies, they found that the current RDA of 600 IUs does not cover 97.5% of the population. Instead, it only ensured that 97.5% of people reached blood levels of 26.8 nanomoles per litre, far below the target range. The actual amount needed is 8,895 preposterous schoolboy error anyway let me show you about a day out i had recently just to finish off on something a bit nicer (coughs) slightly higher bench than average there's a nice doggy so we must be in silleth because this is the ray lonsdale and it's a look at the view and it's a completely magnificent piece of work in iron true uh, artistry quite beautiful and he's done a series of works round about the north of england his workshops in the north of england somewhere in the northeast i think ray lonsdale look him up on the internet incredible work sculpture of the people by the people for the people proper art the way it should be looks like something says something nothing pretentious You might have gathered it's my kind of art. When you get a sunny day in uh, in Cumbria in winter, it's actually quite nice. (laughs) Thank you for watching.